what I said. Like, you're, you're pushing it past what I said by a substantial margin. I'm a sexual conservative. I'm not in the camp of, let's grab each other under the mistletoe at the Christmas party, because what the hell? Is there sexual harassment in the workplace? Yes. Should it stop? That'd be good if it did. That'd be good. Will it? Well, not at the moment it won't, because we don't know what the rules are. Do you think men and women can work in the workplace together? I don't know. Without sexual harassment? We'll see. We'll see. How many years will it take for men and women working in the workplace together? More than 40. To get a sense. More than 40? Mm -hmm. We're new at this. We're new at this. Absolutely. We're completely new at it. It's only been a couple of generations. That's part of the problem, right? Is that we don't know what the rules are. Like, what? here's a rule. How about no makeup in the workplace? Why would that be a rule? <laughs> Why should you wear makeup in the workplace? Uh, Isn't that sexually provocative? No. It's not? No. Well, what is it then? What's the purpose of makeup? Some people would like to just put on makeup. Why? To, 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 I don't know why. Why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal. That's why. Why do you put rouge on your cheeks? Same reason. How about high heels? What are they what for? What about high heels? What about them? They're there to, to exaggerate sexual attractiveness. That's what high heels do. They tilt, your, they tilt your pelvis forward so your hips stick out. That's what they do. And they tighten up your calf muscles. They're a sexual display. Now, I'm not saying that people shouldn't use sexual displays in the workplace. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that that is what they're doing. And that is what they're doing. So what is the relevance then to like, sexual harassment in the workplace then if, if you can't make... Well, the Maoists put everybody in uniforms to stop that sort of thing from happening. Men wear uniforms. That's the way they wear suits. I, I guess I, I'm not seeing the sort of coherence of the, of the thought that you're putting together then because... What are the rules that govern sexual interactions between men and women in the workplace? Yes. The answer is, we don't know. Right. So I'm throwing out some questions. How about makeup? Oh, that's okay. Is it? Why? Why is it okay? Well, I would think that there's certain ownership over one's body that they can take without... How about negligees? <laughs> well, look, if That's you had going a, too far. If you had a workplace with negligees, I think that there would be some sort of standard idea that maybe that would be a sexualized... Thing. Okay, so there's some line between lipstick and negligees that yeah. we don't want to cross. Okay, fair enough. Where exactly is the line? I don't think that anyone would say that wearing makeup to the office is in some ways like sexually deviant or something like that, or that it's inviting a sort of atmosphere of sexuality within the workplace. I would say that. You the second part, that. sure. It's exactly what it's doing. Okay, Why so else would you wear lipstick? Complete the thought for me then, because that's the part that I'd like for you to do. Like, complete the thought. A woman. I'm not saying that women shouldn't do it. And I'm also not saying that it should be banned. But I'm saying that you're absolutely naive if you don't think that that has anything to do with sexuality. Or Obviously sexual it harassment? Does. does it have something to do with sexual harassment in the workplace? I don't know. Do you feel that, let, let's just, yes or no question, do you feel like women wearing makeup in the workplace contributes to sexual harassment in the workplace? Sure, it contributes. And so what should be done about that? You as a clinician who believes that there should be prescriptive ideas that don't mandate behavior, but that will guide behavior. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is. Do you feel like a serious woman who does not want sexual harassment in the workplace, do you feel like if she wears makeup in the workplace that she is somewhat being critical? Yeah, I do think that. I don't see how you could not think that. It's like makeup is sexual display. That's what it's for. You say, well, I want to look more attractive. It's like. What do you mean by attractive exactly? So then what is a better outcome for you then? A workplace with no sexual harassment, where women wear uniforms and don't wear makeup, much like the Maoists, like you were saying, or a sort of freer workplace in which sexual harassment is an inevitability because women wear high heels and makeup? Well, I don't say that sexual harassment is an in inevitability because women wear high heels and makeup. I didn't say that. Or that it is more likely. I said that it... It contributes to the sexualization of the workplace. What's the difference between more likely and that? Okay, more likely. I'll go with that. Yeah, more likely, right? Sure, okay. Okay, so which one do you prefer? Oh, I prefer the one where people have the freedom. And so within that, so we've gotten to that point, that people should have freedom to wear makeup, right? But that that will inevitably lead to, not inevitably, that it is more likely that sexual harassment happens in the workplace. That isn't what I said. Like, you're pushing it past what I said by a substantial margin. Sure, I said that we don't understand the rules like, that I, govern the, the interactions in the, in the, between men and women in the workplace, right? We don't understand the rules. And so I was pushing a limit case. That's what I was doing. I wasn't saying women shouldn't wear makeup. No, I, I was, was saying we could have a question either, about, though. there should be a question raised about that. And there is often. I mean, companies have dress codes, let's say. 
you know, um, and they have a reason for that. But the fact that we got tangled up in this conversation is an indication of exactly how difficult it is to have a reasonable, reasonable conversation about exactly what rules should govern the interactions between men and women in the workplace. I would object to that a little bit because I think the reason why this conversation has been difficult is because like, there are certain things where you'll just punt and you'll say, I'm not saying that, and you'll try and be very hyper-specific. And now, look, mm. there are examples of that where I feel like you were right. Like, I feel like the Kathy Newman article, or the Kathy Newman interview, I felt like a lot of what you're, what, that she put words in your mouth. You're just saying that's the way it is. So you're saying on. women have some sort of duty. So you're if you want women domination. Want to dominate. You're saying you've done your research. I don't feel like I'm doing that. In fact, I've been extremely careful not I'm, to I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm definitely not accusing you of that. Okay, so... I'm I, just saying that these sorts of conversations are difficult, not that you're making it unduly difficult, because okay. I don't think you are. How do we not then take the next step and say that if we want to get rid of sexual harassment in the workplace, that your belief is that women should not wear high heels or makeup in the workplace. Oh, because there's other potential solutions. People could, well, be, you could allow for a certain amount of sexual tension and not act on it in a reprehensible manner. One of the things that's enjoyable about the interactions between men and women, even if you're married, is an element of flirtatiousness that can underscore the interaction. Okay, you don't want to get rid of that. It's too tyrannical to get rid of that. But you're playing with fire. You have to know that you're playing with fire. And so there's going to be some sexual provocativeness in the workplace, let's say, both ways. But you're playing with fire. And you need to know what the rules are. We don't know what the rules are. Okay, how about what if I said it is okay to flirt with your coworker from time to time, but you know, don't, don't grab them in the private. Well, that, well that, that seems, you know, I think we could agree that that might be a reasonable start, right? But then, of course, you still have the problem of exactly what constitutes acceptable flirting. Do you feel like the majority of people then who are sort of in this Me Too movement right now who have been speaking out, yeah. I mean, do you really think all of them are not a, are saying that you can't flirt at all? You know, or do you think most of them are saying, you just don't grab me in the privates? Because I would, I just as somebody who also has read about this, who studied yeah. it quite a bit, who has followed it very intensely, it really does seem like the message is like, hey, like, you know, don't pull your robe off. Don't grab me in the No, I think it's worse I, than that. You do? Yeah, well, look at what happened with NBC. Now you're supposed to report your coworkers if you suspect them of romantic entanglements. You said, like, is it only about not being grabbed? It's like, no, it's not only about that. If it was only about not being grabbed, would you be okay with it? Well, I'm not in favor of people being involuntarily grabbed. I'm not in favor of sexual harassment or sexual assault. And not in the least. If I don't, I think, I already told you what I think. I'm a sexual conservative. Sure. I don't think people should have sex on the first date. I think they should be very careful with sex, right? So I'm not in the camp of let's grab each other under the mistletoe at the Christmas party because what the hell? I'm not in that camp. I'm in the be bloody careful camp and, and don't step out of line and don't like have designs on your secretary when you hire her. I think that's all appalling.